What's going on, Android lovers? This is Clayton Youngberg coming at you from AndroidAuthority.com, your number one source for everything Android. Today we've got a head-to-head -head comparison between the Android 4.1 Jelly Bean operating system and the Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich operating system. Um, the Jelly Bean being newer and the more developed version of Android um, coming in on the Nexus 7 and the Galaxy Nexus stock. And then the Ice Cream Sandwich operating system released some months ago in the... Uh, winter of 2011-2012 uh, coming on the Galaxy Nexus first and we've got two Galaxy Nexus here to compare these two operating systems on my right I'm running the Jelly Bean AOSP operating system no mods complete um, Android open source project install and then on the left I'm running the ice cream sandwich operating system complete factory stock um, on both so we're just going to compare, um, you know, the UI, the uh, speed of each, uh, the browser speed, the quadrant test. Now, both of these phones have the exact same hardware, so we've got an even result. Um, we're not going to have any uh, hardware accelerated performance. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and walk through the differences of each of these operating systems. So as you can see, um, we do have our ice cream sandwich on the left and our jelly bean on the right. They're basically the same as far as the uh, stock dock bar here. They're the same in the navigation bar as well. And then we've got a similar layout um, as far as the status bar on top. Let's go ahead and uh, pull down the status bar on each. You can get a feel for the notifications. As you can see on the Jelly Bean operating system, the notifications have a nicer UI, a more refined look with some nice uh, animations to the left. Now, if you happen to have a notification uh, with, say, a contact image or something like that, if you get a text, you'll have your nice image coming up here on the left. Now, it's the same on Ice Cream Sandwich, but they've dedicated a little more space and a little bit nicer UI on the Ice Cream, uh, no, on the Jelly Bean operating system, I'm sorry. Now, anyways, in the top left, we also have our date and time on Jelly Bean, as well as our settings easily accessed with the slider there. Now, our settings are also easily accessed um, on to the right of the date on the Ice Cream Sandwich operating system. Now, to remove all of your notifications on Jelly Bean, you simply tap the little uh, tiered layer thing there and then you tap the X on the ice cream sandwich operating system. Now what we're going to want to do is go into the settings. We'll go ahead and tap these at the same time. Looks like the jelly bean came up faster than the ice cream sandwich operating system. So now we'll just walk through the actual uh, things included in the settings here. We have our Wi-Fi of course, Bluetooth and data usage monitoring on each. Go ahead and go more. Again it looks like the uh, jelly bean made it there first. We have our mobile networks, our Android Beat em, and NFC on each, so both of these do have uh, native NFC. You're going to need a phone with an NFC chip, which we're going to be seeing a lot of uh, hardware integration in the newer phones to uh, facilitate that. So let's we'll go back. Looks like maybe the ICS uh, got that first this time. We have our storage options, our display, our battery, and apps. Now the cool thing with Jelly Bean is uh, in the apps, we can go ahead and go to uh, any one of our apps that we want. We'll do the same on the ice cream sandwich. We'll actually go to the same app browser. And the cool thing about Jelly Bean is that we can uh, disable the apps from actually um, producing a notification in our notification bar. So if we don't want the apps to give us a notification at all, we can just deselect that and turn off notifications for that app. It's really helpful for a lot of apps that just have spammy notifications, even though uh, Google has now um, enacted the um, no longer having ads in the notification bar up there. But anyways, we'll just go back now, continue going through our settings here. Um, on our accounts settings on Jelly Bean, it is a little different. We have our an entire accounts uh, drop down menu here that we are lacking on Ice Cream Sandwich. The accounts are accessed through Accounts and Sync on Ice Cream Sandwich. And then um, we have our Google accounts and we can add any accounts simply by pressing the Add Account. Now we have um, similar developer options between Jelly Bean and Ice Cream Sandwich. Now the cool thing about Jelly Bean is um, you actually have to turn the entire developer options um, list on. Now we have USB debugging on each, 2D hardware acceleration, all that stuff. Go ahead and go back and go to the About Phone quickly. See we are running 4.1.1 and then we're running 4.0.4. We do have Easter eggs on each. So there's our Easter eggs, and we'll go back. 
Now, another cool implementation of, of Jelly Bean is the um, frame rate running at 60 FPS at all times. So that produces a really nice transition effect. Now, they're both very fast. You won't notice any um, you know, difference in transition from just staring at the phone screen. Our eyes can't pick that up that fast. But they're both very fast. But the uh, Jelly Bean is running at 60 frames per second all the time. It also has a 60 hertz refresh rate uh, to match the hardware of the uh, Galaxy Nexus device. Now it also has triple buffering, which um, the phone actually starts buffering and almost predicts which action you will do next. Um, depending on where you touch the screen, it's going to guess um, you know, which action you're going to do next and start actually buffering that before you even follow through. Now sticking with the home screen, we're going to go ahead and go into the apps now. As you can see, the Jelly Bean did make it there a bit quicker than the uh, ICS. Now we do have the links to the um, market up in the top right, and we'll go ahead and go to the widgets on each. We'll grab a widget and add it to the home screen on each of these. Now as you can see on Jelly Bean, the widget's actually interacting with the existing icons, whereas it's not here on Ice Cream Sandwich. Now anyways, we do have it dropped down. Um, now, once we do that, um, we have resizable widgets on ICS, but not for all of them. But uh, every widget is resizable, or practically every widget here on Jelly Bean. Go ahead and go into messaging. And we'll start a new message. As you can see, the uh, keyboards are almost uh, identical. We don't really have much difference in the keyboard. Uh, once we go ahead and type in the actual um, messaging here, we do have predictions on each. We also have our voice search um, and then our voice detect dictation Excuse me, on the Jelly Bean and the ICS. Now, the cool thing is that um, Jelly Bean OS offers offline voice dictation so you can actually speak into the mic it will um, know what you're saying and then it'll type it being offline you don't need the mobile network for it to match your voice against the other samples it has in the cloud as you do on ICS so you get a better experience with the Jelly Bean OS now anyways in place of the next key we have the return key on uh, Jelly Bean and also regarding messaging we have high resolution contact photos now in uh, Android Jelly Bean so if you can see um, we'll just go ahead and scroll down until we meet a contact photo. I believe that one up here was the only one. Higher resolution for the contact photos, you guys. So we'll go ahead and get into some comparisons, such as speed, uh, the quadrant, and the browser. So before we actually get into comparing the speeds and how the hardware interacts with the software of each of these OSs, we'll just get into some of the other uh, small but noticeable changes that are available in Jelly Bean, such as uh, changes to the Play Store. Now when you download an app on the Play Store, or you um, update it for that matter, you don't have to actually update the entire application. Say you're downloading a 13 megabyte application, uh, that's the original size of the app, and then they come out with an update in a few days. Um, you'll only have to download the actual um, space needed to update the app. You don't need to download another 13 megabytes to totally replace the app. You just download like say one megabyte to actually update the app. Now that's differed uh, from the ice cream sandwich where you would need to download the entire application. We also have a new YouTube functionality and Google Plus. So if we go into YouTube, so you can see here the Android Authority channel has a nice uh, different UI nicer UI and then um, on the ICS it's the classic YouTube where we uh, scroll through the favorites activity uploads all that sort of stuff where we can scroll left on the um, Jelly Bean and access all of our channels and stuff like that. Okay so I went ahead and did a Sun Spider test on the browsers I'll go ahead and bring the phones up to the camera so you can see what we got. Um, on Jelly Bean we got a score of 1692 milliseconds total for all of the processes it ran and then on ICS our score was 1880 milliseconds. Now the smaller the better, so it took less time for the Jelly Bean OS to actually run through all the Sun Spider tests, uh, such as the 3D tests, um, all of the string tests, all of the different um, tests it runs in the Sun Spider JavaScript benchmark test. So the browser is optimized and a bit faster on the Jelly Bean operating system than it is on the Ice Cream Sandwich operating system. Now they're both set up in the same way. We have our tabs. Uh, we can simply add new tabs just like that. Uh, we just swipe away tabs and uh, again and it'll close our browser. Our app management is the exact same such as the recent apps. We uh, bring it up. See we have the browser here. So I'm going to put these two together. Uh, swipe to get rid of anything either direction. Alright so we uh, saw that the browser is a few milliseconds better and it has a faster rendering speed and stuff so let's actually just test the speed 
of the UI operating on the uh, phones themselves. We'll go ahead and perform a quadrant test on each phone and uh, we'll monitor the uh, frames per second that the animations are running at. So let's get this started. So we did get our results here for the quadrant test. Our Galaxy Nexus running Jelly Bean got a 2,295 total score. And then our Galaxy Nexus rocking the ICS got 1,932. So on Jelly Bean, we did uh, score higher, but that is because of the I.O. and the 3D performance. We actually got higher CPU speeds and uh, memory speeds on the ICS device. Anyways, we'll go back, and uh, speaking of hitting the home button, there is the Google Now functionality with Jelly Bean, which is, of course, one of the gems of Jelly Bean that ICS is lacking completely. Um, there is no comparison here anyway. So this is the Google Now feature. Uh, we'll go ahead and go next. So what Google Now is, it basically shows you traffic cards. Uh, it can show you your airline flights. We're going to have to go ahead and enable the... Um, location services to use Google now so we'll go ahead and go into our settings use the uh, GPS satellites and the Google location and now what it actually does is it shows us how many minutes it'll take to get to our house to work it'll show us the weather in our area uh, nearby restaurants our airplane itineraries all sorts of great stuff and then we also have the new uh, voice search integrated which brings us to our next test. Uh, we're going to go ahead and compare the voice search of ICS to the voice search of Jelly Bean. Now we've already established that the Jelly Bean has offline dictation, but we are connected online for maximum search results. Gonna go ahead and hit the mic, uh, speak something into it and see which one gets us there faster and which one uh, gets more accurate results. Now I'm sure a lot of you know Jelly Bean does have the vastly improved um, voice search func uh, functionality that has completely uh, devastated Siri. Um, you might have seen videos like that. But let's go ahead and actually test these two out. We'll go ahead and hit our mics here. Go to androidauthority.com. Opening web page. So we do have the androidauthority.com already opening here on the uh, enhanced Google search, but it did get there a little bit faster on the ICS, as you can see. Um, it is already there on ICS, in fact. Now we're on the mobile version of the uh, website for both of these, and it took us there very nicely. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try one more. Navigate to The Cellar, Idaho Falls, Idaho. Navigating. Okay, got it, and this one got it as well. Um, our GPS is disabled, but it looks like it is taking us here to the cellar. Um, we have the option to actually navigate right here. We can go to the web page, but uh, on the navigation here with ICS, it is already showing us the route, and I live right near this restaurant. So it looks like both of these did actually uh, want to navigate us to the seller. So they both are pretty great. Uh, the voice search on the ICS is nothing to shake a finger at. It is really great. It works well, and so does the Google voice search on the um, Jelly Bean system. We'll try one more. How tall is the Eiffel Tower? Eiffel Tower is 1,063 feet tall. So it looks like the enhanced Google uh, search gave us an oral result um, and it did show the image here in the nice card form like Google Now does. And then the ICS did um, bring up the result. We got 1,063 feet as our first result on the Google search. So they do work perfectly. Now we do um, have the option to scroll through images, places, and we have our settings here on the Google Now. But they both work fine and they both actually uh, kill Siri. Now anyways, let's check out how some of the uh, hardware interacts with the software. We'll do some camera tests and see if each of them are uh, any faster than the other. And we'll just do that so you guys can see. So you can see the transitions um, are a lot better here on Jelly Bean. As we take a picture, they kind of slide to the right. Now to get to the gallery on each of these uh, devices, what we can do is a, on Ice Cream Sandwich, click the little uh, recent photo icon where we can have our sharing options and then access the gallery like that. But on ice, um, then on Jelly Bean, we can actually just swipe to the right and bring up our recent photos. And we can swipe to the left to get back to the camera. Or we can press the small image and bring up the entire gallery with our sharing options here. 
Now I find that a little more intuitive and easier to use than the ICS um, way of doing things. So now finally we can just go ahead and check out our lock screens. Uh, we have the top um, having the status bar. We can access the status bar on Jelly Bean, but we can't on Ice Cream Sandwich from the lock screen. Anyways, we have our custom sliders. We can go to the camera or the unlock. We can also access Google Now on the lock screen of Jelly Bean. And we can just uh, go to the home screen on ICS. But anyways, guys, that was our comparison between Android Ice Cream Sandwich and Android Jelly Bean 4.0 versus 4.1. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop them into the comments section. We'll have our full written review accompanying the video very soon here. Um, tell us what you guys think. Do you guys want to rock Jelly Bean or are you good with the uh, market dominating ice cream sandwich for a while? I mean, if you've got a Galaxy Nexus, you can get the uh, dumps and flash them right to your device. There's many other devices coming out with fully functional builds of Jelly Bean as we speak. But uh, what are your thoughts, guys? Do you like Jelly Bean or do you like Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich? Go ahead and drop us a line. This is Clayton Youngberg with AndroidAuthority.com and have a great day, guys. <laughs>